Jared with Rockarazzi.com. We are live at the Vans Warp Tour with Anti Flags. Justin saying, Justin, hey man, thanks so much for taking the time. Oh uh, man, it's good to be here. So listen, um, I was kind of uh, sneaking my ear into some of these prior interviews. Right, right. But um, I want to ask you something a little bit different. Um, how difficult is it to to start so early in the morning as a singer? Is you have to do, you have to wake up early? Yeah, it's up? it's actually very difficult actually, and. Uh, you know, if I had to play first every single day, I, at some point I would just, you know, break down and cry because I don't think I could do it. It's, 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 it's. I've done it, you know, a number of days in a row where we'll play early, whether you know we'll be on tour and we'll have to like play the radio station before our show later in the day, or you know, sometimes on Warp Tour, everybody on Warp Tour has to play early at least once. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's kind of like a democracy here. It's like everybody serves their time. Hopefully, we're getting ours out of the way early, you know, and uh. But, it, you know, that said, we played early, we had a great crowd, it was a great time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I had to play early, this would be the time I want to play early. Um, but it is hard because, I mean, you know what it's like sometimes you wake up in the morning and you have no voice. You can you get like, oh, hey, good morning, you know, and, and then, you know, take that voice and try to sing with it. It is, it can be difficult and it's something that I can only do so many days in a row probably. Are you the guy that, that warms up? Do you do vocal exercise or you just... Yeah. You do? yeah, I actually do and I, the reason being that, you know, there would be times on tour we maybe do three different sets, like three different appearances in a day, and by showtime, I could hardly talk, never mind sing. So I just had to learn how to, to properly warm it warm up my voice and how to sing and you know it's amazing when you do it it honestly like I know it sounds stupid it's like a no-brainer but it makes such a sure. huge difference you know and uh, I rarely lose my voice anymore like I feel like only at this point in my life do I actually understand how to sing right. and how and I, I I sound the same you know it's not I didn't have to change my my vocal sound to to not destroy my voice and uh, yeah, so it makes a nice difference. So take me through the writing process a little bit, Justin, for you. What kind of writer are you? Are you the guy that has lyrics all over your living room? Are you the guy that wakes up in the middle of the night with a guitar? Does it happen various ways for you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all of the above and more, you know. Um, I think that uh, it, it, one of the things that's funny for me is I can remember almost like where I was every time I wrote a song and how it came about. and. Uh, and, and it's funny, like quite often when we're playing a song, like I'll have a little quick like flashback in the middle of it to like, oh yeah, I remember writing that part. Right. And it, you know, it's like sometimes waking up in the middle of the night and I'll have a song idea and I have a little tape recorder under my bed and I'll, you know, mumble it into, into that or, you know, I'll just be sitting around playing my guitar and I'll play a riff and sing something at the same time. I'm like, holy shit, that's, that's really cool, you know, it should be a song. And, um, and then, you know, sometimes it's just being inspired by something and deciding that I need to write a song about that or you know I hear about something and on the spot boom you know I write you know you, you just have an, an idea for a lyric and you know I think that I give you lots of examples like with the song one trillion dollars I remember hearing that you know the the, oh, the world over basically uh, at the time had was spending one trillion dollars a year on military weaponry and you know I just remember like hearing that and thinking about it and this little like song came into my head and that was where you know I had my acoustic guitar there and that's how that song came about and you know there's 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 a lot of different things that give give you ideas on on what to write songs about uh, for me more than anything though it's usually like when I'm listening to like a news program like Democracy Now, you can find Democracy Now at uh, democracynow.org. It's an amazing independent news program. And um, you know, mornings I'd be sitting there like listening or watching Democracy Now on my laptop, and you know they would interview a guest, and it would, it would just be so fascinating and so interesting, something that you would never hear about in the mainstream. And uh, you know, I would think like, man, people need to know about this. And uh, you know. That's quite often where I'll you know, get an idea to write a song. So, listening again to your previous, previous interviews, you seem like a deep guy, a philosophical guy. Do you yourself think about legacy, Justin, about how you want to be remembered? I know in the, in the Hollywood scene, and we, we came from L.A., and we lost you know, Farrah Fawcett and Michael Jackson in the same day, right? And Ned uh, McMahon, don't forget it. Right, right. No. Can't forget it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But, you know, you know, it got me thinking about, you know, in, interviewing um, the bands out here. It's like, do you guys think about legacy at all? How do you want to be remembered? Uh, I'll tell you what, um, I I never had until the George Bush administration came along and then, you know, the build up to the war in Iraq and I, I just, I've always felt in my life that there's kind of a defining moment where, you know, people are faced with a choice and it's like, 
you can stand up and and say no to something that is in you know that's that's unjust or you can you can stand up for justice and uh, or you can kind of cower away and hide out and play it safe and you know in the build up to the Iraq war I I just it wasn't so much about legacy as you know me as a musician or you know a, a member of a band but it it was legacy just about the the history of who I was for for you know my family and for uh, you know, for people who might read about me and my generation years later. Because I, my personal belief at that time, and I still believe this, that, you know, history is not going to look back on the Iraq War and on torture and Guantanamo Bay and, you know, the suspension of human rights and civil rights that, that, that went on during uh, the Bush regime. History is not going to look back on that very kindly. And just like, you know, under, now, I'm not saying that the, the Bush regime was akin to the Nazis. They weren't, you know, but um, they did a lot of things that were really, really wrong. And, um, you know, there were people during the Nazi era who actually did stand up. And those people are remembered as standing up and, and you know, taking a stand and, and not just rolling over and, and hiding out and saying, oh, yeah, go ahead, Hitler, do whatever you want. And I, I just felt that same way. I just, uh, for me personally, I did not want to, you know, have to look somebody in the eye, you know, 25 years from now and say, yeah, during that time I just... I didn't really do anything. I, don't, I wasn't really paying attention. It, it was too complicated. I just let it happen. You know, I wanted to be able to say to people, you know, I was on the streets saying no. I was writing songs saying no. I was in the public, you know, speaking out against what was happening. Because what was happening was so completely fucked up. And, I, you know, for me, I think, you know, completely against the values and the ideas that this country was founded upon. And that I think, you know, for me, just as a humanitarian and what I believe in, um, it, it was everything that was counter to that. So, yeah, I mean, to a certain degree, um, that's the first time I really kind of thought about that idea and that concept. So, uh, it, it's kind of an interesting question. I, I mean, I think it's a good question. Thanks. I, I aim to ask good questions. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, last question for you. Any crazy superstitions for you to, uh, before you go on stage? Anything that you do that are prized to know about Justin saying? Well, I mean, I don't necessarily have, like, I did grow up Irish, you know, like, I even have, like, I'm even an Irish citizen, you know, okay. so, like, I, and the Irish, you know, we're, like, terribly superstitious people, you know, like, like, when I was a kid, if you would hear, like, you know, there'd be a storm and, like, the wind would be howling and somebody would say, like, oh, there's the wind howling and, like, you know, my grandma would be like, it's the banshee, you know, <laughs> like, right. and, like, she was half kidding and half serious, sure, sure, you know, course, like, and... So you grow up in that environment, and that you know, you, it's it gets in your under your skin. You know, right. it stays with you. And um, I, I don't. I'm a pretty super superstitious person t to to a certain degree. Um, I can talk myself out of it though, pretty good. And you know, I can kind of be like, oh man, you're just being being right. ridiculous. Right. You know, like chill out. But uh, what I my my main routine before we go on stage is it's kind of weird is I warm up my voice and stretch at the same time okay. Okay. so I don't like break a bone or right, 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 you know right. pull a muscle whatever and it just looks kind of ridiculous and sometimes when people see it they're like dude what the fuck are you doing <laughs> man you know but you know it, it, it kind of makes sense and uh, it, one, one thing that people probably would be surprised about is that I, I had like a, my mom and my sister whenever they were on airplanes and they would take off they would always like do the genuflect thing you know right. and I think that like that was something I picked up when I was a really little kid, even though I'm not like I don't belong to any religious faith, really, you know. Uh -huh. uh, I've gone to the Unitarian Church sometimes, you know, right. but I don't really consider myself religious at all. And uh, sometimes when I'm on an airplane, I'll exactly that's you know, when everyone gets religious. Bring in, bring in like the Holy Spirit, exactly. you know. Exactly. Let's hold this shit up. I don't, I don't <laughs> exactly. want to die tonight, you know. Like my name's Justin Saint. I'm from Anti Flag. Shout out to the Rockerazzi.com. Peace. <laughs>